So what I've got for us to take a look at today then is the uh, Pagona antenna and I'm not sure whether this is the uh, Mark II, it's got uh, Pagona Dash 2 on there, whether there's been any changes since uh, the guy originally came up with this design. I think it's been around for about two years now and uh, it's open source so uh, the Gerbers are available online for you to download and uh, you know you can have your own made up but uh, they're pretty cheap anyway I picked this up off Amazon I think I paid about £6.99 for this and it was uh, free shipping but um, I thought what we'd do before we uh, take it apart and have a really close look at this antenna and disassemble it is uh, hook it up to the spectral an analyzer just to give us a quick uh, idea of how well this uh, antenna performs and look at the you know the uh, return loss and uh, its center frequency and uh, we'll get a rough idea of its bandwidth as well so the setup is uh, just the same as always but take a look at the spectrum analyzer and have a look at the uh, performance of this antenna so here on the spectrum analyzer then a really nice uh, frequency response there i've got the spectrum analyzer centered on uh, 5.84 uh, gigahertz and you can see uh, the return loss there is uh, really really low so that's uh, a good indication that it's got a very good VSWR and uh, it really is working well just in that sweet spot there of uh, 5.84 gigahertz to probably uh, 5.860 gigahertz so quite narrow but uh, a really really nice frequency response so let me just move the spectrum analyzer along a little bit to get an idea of its operating frequency and I've got that set at uh, 5.967 gigahertz so it would still work really well up to that kind of frequency so really nice little antenna this and even on this side of the center frequency it's now centered on uh, 5.84 uh, gigahertz here but uh, even that on this side is uh, slightly higher but it's still pretty good compared to uh, a lot of most antennas that I test so really nice antenna so let's uh, deconstruct the antenna then and uh, we'll see how uh, you know how he's done this we'll take, take a look at the measurements and the uh, overall design of this antenna so first look at this antenna then it looks pretty simple you've got uh, two PCBs here of uh, equal diameter and then you've got this third one which is smaller further down the uh, coax line and uh, what that's doing is a problem you get by using semi-rigid coax for some antenna designs is this can start uh, radiating the signal out from here before it gets to the actual antenna and that can be a problem when using semi-rigid coax and it is a problem with some designs and this is designed here to stop that from happening whether it's uh, acting as a ballon I'm not quite sure but uh, it probably you know being something similar to that acting as uh, a kind of uh, blocking from this uh, actually radiating the signal and uh, transmitting all that signal up the transmission line of the coax to the actual elements of the antenna itself so uh, what I'll do first then is I'll desolder the SMA here and then desolder this circular part here put the SMA back on and give it another test on the spectrum analyzer and then we can compare the uh, output and see if it makes it much worse when we remove this uh, circular piece here so we've got the antenna hooked up then to the test setup here but look at the output on the spectrum analyzer it's like a completely different antenna so here's the uh, frequency response here I've got it centered on 5.848 gigahertz here but it's nowhere near as low as it was the first time we've tested it it, should, you know, it shows that the VSWR has jumped up considerably so that really does help uh, the antenna propagate the uh, RF signal much more efficiently and as I said some other antennas could also benefit from uh, something similar it's something we can probably test in the future so I've broken the antenna down and I've sketched out this schematic so we can get a clearer picture of uh, what's going on with this design then so to start off with then the space between the two main elements the ground and the uh, driven element on top here is uh, 4.5 millimeters uh, a gap there 
and then you have a gap of 10 millimeters between this uh, smaller disc here which is acting as uh, a cutoff point to stop the coax itself uh, radiating out like its own antenna and then messing everything up whether that is a ballon or not i don't know but uh, it's certainly there to stop that and as i said previously it is a problem with some antenna designs when you're using semi-rigid coax so here we've got the uh, two elements then the uh, ground element here and the uh, driven element on top here now this antenna that we've taken a look at is right hand circular polarized and it's the top uh, main driven element that drives that polarization so the uh, orientation of uh, the top one drives the uh, entire antenna to be right and circular polarized because the bottom one is in the opposite direction on the left hand so presumably if you just flip these over and uh, soldered it back together again upside down you would then have a left hand circular polarized antenna now as far as the uh, element length is concerned this is the uh, element itself these uh, here are just arranged in a uh, feed line sort of way but this is the main element and the length of that element is 14 millimeters which is a little bit longer uh, than you would think for 5.8 gigahertz um, for instance a quarter wavelength at uh, 5.840 gigahertz where this is uh, it has its uh, best center frequency is 12.83 uh, millimeters long so it's a little bit longer than that and if you add all the other measurements up we've got uh, two millimeters here three millimeters here and two millimeters here it's still longer than what it should be but uh, these here are not part of the antenna itself the antenna starts here so basically it's 14 millimeters long so that tells me that this particular design is uh, not capacitive it's inductive and inductive in uh, an antenna means the antenna is longer than uh, what it should be to uh, remain at uh, a quarter wavelength let's say for that given frequency it can be a little bit confusing some designs are capacitive like the uh, short hertzian dipole and a lot of people get confused of that because at uh, 2.4 gigahertz it's uh, 25 millimeters long instead of the uh, 31.25 millimeters that you would normally find for uh, 2.4 gigahertz so i'm presuming that this antenna is inductive which makes the wavelength longer so possibly that's why we've got 14 millimeters there so here we've got the uh, inner diameters of the circles of both elements here so this one's the uh, top one the main driven element the one that controls the uh, orientation of the uh, polarization and uh, the outside diameter of this inner circle here is 10 millimeters and the inner diameter is four millimeters and the uh, bottom uh, uh, element here that one's slightly bigger the uh, diameter of the bottom one is 15 millimeters and the inner diameter is 10 millimeters so whether that in itself is making this design inductive i'm not really sure so it is a nice uh, little interesting design this and uh, something else that i will add when i was uh, tearing this down to uh, you know con deconstruct this it is a really tough design and you would struggle to uh, break this out in the field i definitely don't think you're going to break this by uh, crashing your quadcopter i think you'd have to stand on it to actually break this so from that respect it will be uh, you know a long lasting antenna for you i don't think you're going to break it anytime soon and another good thing about this design is the fact that it's etched onto pcb so it removes the human error aspect of uh, constructing this antenna i.e cutting uh, copper wires and things like that the only place where um, you know you could make a mistake in constructing this antenna is uh, the gap here the spacing between the two elements and the spacing between the uh, smaller diameter board here so uh, you know etching out of pcbs you, you can really uh, you know get continuity across uh, your manufacturing process now this design itself i think the only way you could uh, make this antenna is to etch it onto uh, pcb but uh, i did have a go 
uh, making one out of wire here so you can see the elements without uh, the PCB uh, in the way there and uh, I constructed this it took me uh, about an hour but uh, it was a little bit fiddly and uh, it's very very fragile of course so let's give this a test on the spectrum analyzer and uh, you know I'm not um, guaranteeing that this is going to be bang on sensor frequency at 5.8 gigahertz like this one is but uh, I have constructed it here in the lab so let's see what uh, frequency this um, you know operates at because I I uh, try to design this as close as possible um, you know uh, to these measurements here so it'll be interesting so I've got this little uh, antenna that I made uh, you know just to see if I could make it out of wire instead of PCB here on the uh, test setup but as you can see on the spectrum analyzer I've overshot the frequency this is uh, center frequency at 6.126 gigahertz but uh, if you're wanting a uh, antenna at 6.1 gigahertz this antenna should work uh, really really well so the design itself is rock solid so in conclusion then a uh, very very nice uh, omnidirectional antenna for your uh, FPV setup I mean of course I've uh, checked around and this seems to put out around 2 2.5 dB and uh, the guy who designed this has uh, a website with all the measurements and files on there He's uh, open sourced it so you can download the files and have some etch for yourself if you wanted to. But uh, I purposely didn't uh, go on his website and get the measurements off his website uh, before I did this video. I wanted to, you know, double check the measurements of this because uh, I didn't buy it off him. But uh, the measurements that are on his website, uh, you know, are spot on to the measurements of this. I think uh, it was a little bit wider. Uh, the distance between the ground and the uh, driven element here but uh, he says on his website that you're allowed a uh, 0 0.7 tolerance and the same for this as well so pretty much spot on I mean as for building this you can't really go on uh, go wrong sorry I mean if you're uh, building a uh, cloverleaf antenna uh, you can make errors when you're building it by hand of course you can but uh, when you're having something etched onto uh, PCB like this you, you as I say you can't go wrong you can just make more and more one after the other and each one is going to be exactly the same the only area you need to be careful about when constructing this is the uh, measurements between the uh, two elements themselves and the uh, measurement of uh, this one as well I uh, think it's you know a really interesting antenna it's just a shame I uh, can't see how you could uh, take this and uh, add more DB like you can with a uh, dipole antenna by extending it out and making it longer um, I don't know maybe he's working on something that uh, you know you can extend the uh, DB of this I've come across uh, you know the design of this incorporated with a uh, back reflector to make it more of a directional antenna not sure the DB of that one but I'll try and get one in to test that as well but uh, you know if you're starting out uh, uh, with your quadcopter and FPV if you get one of these and uh, you know a decent helical antenna let's say because it is circular polarized so you do have to match those up remember because you can lose 3 dB by uh, not having them matched up down to the uh, mismatch even using a linear uh, antenna on your receiver and a circular polarized one on your quadcopter you will lose around uh, or up to 3 dB because they're not matched so you know get yourself a uh, helical antenna for your uh, uh, receiver and uh, use this and you'll have a really good setup straight out of the bat so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a uh, thumbs up if you've got one of these and you've uh, been using it let us know how you uh, got on and how you find it as I say I don't think you can really go wrong with the construction so every one should be identical so if you did enjoy it, please uh, give it a thumbs up, as I say, and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.